Have you ever been fascinated by robots but thought they were always very complicated to understand? Or did you think of them as these scary creatures who are going to take over the world one day? Or have you been more geeky than that and you actually thought how do the robots know where they are? Or even how do the robots know where to move to pick an object or to perform any task for that matter? Such as for the creepy robot shown here, if this robot was assigned to grab an object, how would it know how far the object is? How much does it need to move? At what orientation does it need to come down in order to grab the object properly? And then to take into account the forces to make sure that it isn't squeezing on the object too hard. And then how does it know how much the motors need to rotate in order to move the object from point A to point B? Is there a limit to how fast the robots can move and do a task? Or have you ever wondered, is there anything, literally anything in the world that the robots cannot do? If you have ever thought of these questions, then hold on to your seats. I know you paid for the whole seat, but you are only going to need the edge. I am Zain Khan and welcome to this video series, Robotics 101. In this series, we are going to talk about the kinematics and modeling of robots. Kinematic is related to the motion of the robot, while modeling is related to the design aspect of the robot. When dealing with kinematics, you have the robot and you have a predetermined task. So you have to make the robot perform the task and analyze its motion. While on the other hand in modeling, you just have the task defined. So using the task as a starting point, you need to come up and design a robot that would be capable of performing the task. Now coming to the most important question. who? is this Robotics 101 video series for? As in who would benefit the most out of watching this video series? But before we dive into that, let me talk a bit about this video series in general. It would consist of a number of videos. Each video would be crisp. It would be similar to this video and it would be less than 10 minutes long. I would try to keep them somewhere around five to eight minutes. Every video would cover one concept and every video would build upon the noise given in the previous video. So I would highly recommend that you watch the videos in the order they are. Now, who is this video series for? The simple answer is for anyone who is interested in robotics. As a disclaimer, no prior knowledge is required for this video series. We aren't going to do any high level mathematics and whatever we are going to do, we are going to start from the very basics. Hence the name Robotics 101, 101, right? The introductory level course. To be more precise, this video series is for both the undergraduates and the graduates. You know, in university, there are some courses that are open to be taken by both the graduates and the undergraduates. This video series is just like that. It would do good for those who are doing either the majors or minors in robotics and even for those who are just deciding if they should go into the world of robotics or not. So just to reiterate, this course is for anyone who is interested in robotics. Now, Let's talk for a few minutes about what we are going to cover in this video series. We are going to start with coordinate transformations. By making use of coordinate transformations, the robot is able to know where it is in space and where the other objects are in space relative to it. Then we are going to talk about the robotic wrist. You can think of the robotic wrist as being the end effector. 
end effector is anything which is at the very end of the robot. It can be a gripper or even a camera or anything. So if the robots turn even one day, they are going to chase you and they are going to pick you up by their end effector. Then we are going to talk about forward kinematics. It is one of the most integral part of robotics. It is often abbreviated as F.K. Basically, it is the process of obtaining the end effector position in space and also its orientation given a set of robot parameters. So what are robot parameters? In this drawing, the robot parameters are the joint angles, which are marked by theta and also the changing length of the link, which is marked by L. So forward kinematics is how is changing the theta and the L going to affect the end effector position and orientation in space. This is so important that I am just going to write this again so that it sits in your mind. Then we are going to talk about inverse kinematics, which is the exact opposite of forward kinematics. Hence the name. So in inverse kinematics, you are given the desired position and orientation on the end effector. And using that as the starting point, you figure out the required robot parameters. So you have to figure out the link lengths and the joint angles that would place the robot end effector at the desired configuration. Then we are going to touch on something called gimbal rocks. And we are also going to talk about the velocities of the robots and Jacobians. And finally, we are going to talk about the forces and torques of the robot. But we are not going to start with those cool robots that you see in videos, those robots moving about in space, since they are complicated. After all, you can't learn to run before you can learn to walk. But don't get disheartened. We are going to get there. But first, we are going to start with the 2D planar robots. After we get the hang of it, we are going to move to the 3D robots. That brings us to the end of this video. If you like this video, please do show your support by subscribing and also so that you can get updated when I post new videos to this video series. And as always, see you in the next video.